Hello my dear students, uh, last class I explained about uh, reservoir capacity for a specified yield from the mass inflow curve. So today let us discuss about uh, calculation of uh, safe yield from a reservoir of a given capacity. The following uh, is the procedure of determining the safe yield from a reservoir of a given storage capacity with the help of a mass inflow curve. Okay, so first you have to draw the mass inflow curve here. So prepare the mass inflow curve on the same diagram. Draw straight lines from the common origin representing the demands at various rates, say varying from 0 to 5000 hectare meter per year. Okay, so this is our demand curve this also have to be drawn after that next step is from the apexes a uh, a1 a2 a3 etc of the mass inflow curve a1 a2 a3 of the mass inflow curve draw tangents in such a way that this is a tangent in such a way that their maximum departure uh, uh, from the mass inflow curve does not exceed the specified reservoir capacity. Thus, in the figure, ordinates E1 D1, E2 D2, E3 D3 are equal to the reservoir capacity, say around 1500 hectares meter. Now measure the slopes of each of these tangents. Okay, measure the tangent uh, slopes of each of these tangents. The slopes indicate the yield which can be attained in each year from the reservoir of a given capacity. The slope of flattest demand line is the firm yield or safe yield. Okay, so like this you can calculate what is uh, the safe yield from the uh, reservoir of a given capacity. Okay, so next let us discuss about uh, sediment flow in streams or reservoir sedimentation. All the rivers carry a certain amount of silt eroded uh, from catchment area during heavy these sediments are deposited in the reservoir on the upstream of the dam because of reduction of velocity. Reservoir sedimentation is a difficult problem uh, for which uh, an economical solution has not yet been discovered except uh, by providing uh, a dead storage to accommodate the deposits during the life of the dam. Uh, disintegration, erosion, transportation and sedimentation are the different stages uh, which uh, leads to the silting of a reservoir. Sedimentation reduces the available capacity of the reservoir. If the sedimentation is continuous, the useful life of the reservoir goes on decreasing. The extent of erosion and hence the silt load in the stream depends upon the following factors uh, that is uh, the nature of soil in catchment area then uh, topography of the catchment area cultivation in catchment area then vegetation cover in catchment area intensity of rainfall in catchment if the soil in the catchment is loose and erodible the sediment load is large Okay. In the case of catchments having steep slopes, the sediment load is large because of high velocity of water. If the catchment area has no vegetal uh, cover, the soil is easily eroded and the sediment load is large. If the intensity of rainfall is high, the discharge in the river is increased and the sediment load is large. The nature of the soil of the catchment area is an important factor. If the soil is soft, there is always a possibility of sheet erosion. The tributaries collecting water of the catchment area containing hard soil carry lesser silt. Steep slopes give rise to high velocities and erode the surface soil easily. Similarly, higher intensity of rainfall causes greater runoff and more erosion. If the catchment area has sufficient vegetation cover, the higher velocities are checked and the erosion is very much eroded, uh, reduced. Area having poor or practically no vegetal cover, the productive of more silt. The rivers or tributaries passing through such areas carry more silt load with it, uh, causing quick silting of 
the reservoir. There are uh, types of uh, sediments means uh, the sediment load carried by the river may be divided into the following two parts. The first one is bed load. Second one is suspended load. Now, uh, let us see what is the bed load. Is that part of the uh, sediment load which moves in contact with the uh, bed of the river. The bed load is generally much smaller, 10 to 15 percent of the suspended load. It consists of relatively uh, coarser uh, materials. Then uh, the suspended load, um, here uh, it is uh, the load is kept in suspension because of the vertical component of the eddies formed due to the friction of the flowing water against the bed. It consists of relatively finer materials. Okay, uh, So, uh, these are the different, uh, I mean, uh, this figure shows the reservoir sedimentation and uh, we'll see uh, what is your density current. Okay, fine sediment deposit. You can see this is a fine uh, sediment deposit and this is the coarse sediment deposit and uh, this is covering uh, sluice and upper uh, supply sluice relatively clear water will be there here and this is the water surface and this is floating debris. Density currents. A density current may be defined as a gravity flow of one fluid under another fluid of approximately equal density. Okay, It is nothing but the flow of one fluid under another fluid um, of approximately equal density Okay, under a gravity flow. In case of reservoirs, the water stored is usually clear and the the inflow during floods is generally muddy. The two fluids have therefore different densities and the heavy turbid water flows along the channel bottom towards the dam under the influence of gravity. This is known as density current. The rate of silting in case of reservoirs reduces if the density currents are vented by proper location and operation of outlet and sluice gates. Sluice gates. Okay. Next, let us see how to measure the sediment load. The amount of uh, silt or the sediment load carried by a stream is measured by taking the samples of water carrying silt at various depths. The samples are then filtered and the sediment is removed and dried. The sediment load is measured in the units of parts per million part of water that is ppm. Okay. There are no accurate devices to measure the bed load which is estimated to about 15% of the suspended load. Sediment load, how you can calculate that is equal to weight of the sediment divided by weight of the sample of water into 10 raised to 6 ppm. Okay, so uh, this is about measurement of sediment load. You can calculate sediment load using this formula. Weight of sediment divided by weight of sample of water into 10 raised to 6. That is in ppm means parts, uh, parts per million part of water. Next let us discuss about life of reservoir. The ultimate density of a reservoir is to be filled with the silt uh, deposits. To allow for silting, a certain percentage of total storage is usually left unutilized and is called dead storage. However, as the time passes on more and more silting takes place and the life or effective storage is gradually reduced. The useful life of reservoir is terminated when its capacity is reduced to 20% of the design capacity. Remember, Reservoir, a useful life of the reservoir is terminated when its capacity is reduced to 20% of the design capacity. The reservoir planning must therefore include the consideration of probable rate of silting so that the useful life of the reservoir may be determined. The reservoir sedimentation is measured in terms of its trap efficiency. Okay, uh, the trap efficiency of a reservoir is the percent of inflowing sediment which is resigned, uh, which is uh, retained in reservoir. Detailed observations uh, show that the trap 
uh, efficiency is a function of the ratio of reservoir capacity to, to the total inflow. How you can write trap efficiency that is equal to a function of the ratio of the reservoir capacity to the total inflow. In this way, you can calculate what is the trap efficiency. The reservoir sedimentation is measured in terms of its trap efficiency. Uh, how to calculate uh, the uh, life of the reservoir? Uh, knowing the inflow rate, uh, calculate uh, the capacity for inflow ratio and obtain the drop a trap efficiency from the curve for the full capacity of the reservoir. There are some steps uh, one by one we'll see. The first one is this, knowing the inflow rate. Um, calculate the ratio that is capacity divided by inflow and obtain the trap efficiency from the curve for the full capacity of the reservoir. Next, divide the total capacity into any stable interval, say 10%. Uh, assuming 10% capacity has been reduced due to sediment deposit, find the trap efficiency for the reduced capacity that is 90% of the original and the inflow ratio. For this interval of 10% capacity, find average trap efficiency by taking the average of uh, trap efficiency found in step 2 and 3. Three. Next, determine the sediment inflow rate by taking water samples and drying the sediment. Multiply the total annual sediment transported by the trap efficiency found in step 3. Convert this sediment deposited into hectare meter units deposited in one year. Divide the volume interval by the sediment deposited to get the number of years to fill this volume interval of 10% capacity. Repeat the procedure for further intervals like 80%, 70%, 60% of the capacity. The total life of the reservoir will be equal to the total number of years required to fill each of the volume intervals. Oh, these are the methods or steps to be followed to find the calculation of the life of a reservoir. Next, let us discuss about control of sedimentation in reservoirs. Mm, sedimentation of a reservoir is a natural phenomena and is a matter of vital uh, concern for uh, storage projects in meeting various demands like irrigation, hydroelectric power, flood control, etc. Since it affects the useful capacity of the reservoir based on which projects are expected to be productive for a design period. Further, uh, the deposited sediment adds to the forces on structures in dams, spillways, etc. The rate of sedimentation will depend largely on the annual sediment load carried by the stream and the extent to which the same will be retained in the reservoir. This in turn depends upon a number of factors such as the area and nature of the catchment, level use pattern and cultivation practices, grazing, logging, construction activities and conservation practices, then rainfall pattern, storage capacity, period of storage in relation to the sediment load of the stream, particle size distribution in the suspended sediment, channel hydraulics, location and size of the sluices, outlet works, configuration configuration of the reservoir, the method and purpose of releases through the dam. Okay, So, therefore, attention is required to each one of these factors for the efficient control of sedimentation of reservoirs with a view to enhancing their useful life. And some of these methods are discussed in the Bureau of Indian Standard Code IS 6518-1992 code of practice for control of sediment in reservoirs. Next, uh, let us uh, discuss there are some methods uh, used for the control of silting of reservoirs. The first one is proper selection of the reservoir site. Control of sediment inflow, that is check dam, construction of check dam or vegetation screens, uh, then uh, proper designing and reservoir planning, uh, control of sediment deposit in the reservoir, uh, removal of uh, sediment deposit and erosion control in the catchment area. Let us discuss one by one 